The first story is about Hillary Clinton. I barely ever talk about her. It's kind of like Voldemort, how they say like, he who must not be named. I just kind of blocked that stuff out of my life because like for a while I, I wasn't connecting with anything that Hillary Clinton said. Uh, it was like, you know, a lot of just weird stuff and like energy wise, like I felt that whole like Clinton, I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. But I have to call, I have to call it where I see it. Hillary Clinton actually told the truth and it's a, amazing on multiple levels. I, I don't care if it's Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, uh, I don't know, Steve Bannon, it doesn't matter just like what's the truth. Like if I like ice cubes and Hillary Clinton likes ice cubes, I'm not gonna pretend like, oh, I hate ice cubes now, I prefer my ice melted. It's like, you just liked ice cubes five seconds ago. It's like, well, Hillary said it. Uh, there's a good skit Jimmy Kimmel actually did in 2016, maybe I'll post it, where they were asking Hillary supporters if uh, you know they agreed with Hillary's statements and they all said yes, but they were actually Donald Trump's statements. It's like people who support a certain candidate they do opposite day when it's like, oh, Trump said that? I hate it now, but like you just liked it a day ago. Anyway, Hillary Clinton told the truth about immigration in Europe and it proved Donald Trump right. Donald Trump's been saying this for two years, three years probably, and everyone's saying Donald Trump's so racist, he's so terrible, he's such a bad person, he hates everybody, and now Hillary Clinton is telling it to her EU buddies like Angela Merkel and Macron, because one, uh, Angela Merkel's stepping down because she's like, oh, I gotta get out of this bad party. I started a tea party, everybody left, I broke all the Tupperware, or what, <laughs> I don't know if you could break Tupperware, you get what I'm saying. Angela Merkel's out, Macron is ridiculously unpopular, and I think Hillary Clinton is trying to salvage her little, her, her little buddies, because they can't figure out why nobody likes them anymore. And she's saying that far-right populism and far-right nationalism is on the rise in Europe because they don't handle their immigration policy well. Yes, yes, Hillary Clinton, yes, 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 a thousand percent yes. I've been saying this for two years as CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, Huffington Post, Vox, all these weirdo magazines, uh, Vice, uh, you know, all these feminist blogs, they've been lying about it for two years and finally Hillary Clinton tells the truth. Yes, Hillary Clinton, you're a thousand percent right. Far right populism and nationalism is on the rise in Europe because they don't handle illegal immigration. Yes, that's exact, That's actually exactly why it's on the rise because when you don't do something right and people start getting mad, they start going to somebody who will do it right and that seems to be the right wing are the only people that actually care about immigration and illegal immigration and you know figuring out the situation. So yes, I wanna just say yes for 20,000 minutes long. Yes, 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 that's, that's exactly why the left wing is losing. That's exactly why liberals are losing in Canada, Brazil, Europe, United States, pretty much everywhere. So here's some direct quotes from Hillary Clinton. It's amazing, because it's like, I'm just so blown away that she actually told the truth. She said to the, to the leaders of Europe, she said, we're not gonna be able to continue to provide refugee and support. Yes, <laughs> yes. And she also said, I think Europe needs to get a handle on migration because that's what lit the flame. Yeah, that's exactly what lit the flame. You're a thousand percent right. The flame of right-wing nationalism and populism was lit because Europe didn't have a handle on their migration. This is like Christmas morning, Hillary Clinton telling the truth. I think Europe needs to get a handle on migration because that's what lit the flame. Yes. And then she said, if we don't deal with the migration issue, it will continue to roil the body politic. Yes, 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 Hillary Clinton, yes. Revel in that truth, yes, that's, that's exactly what's going on. I've been saying for two years, the reason that the right, right wing was rising, my friend was actually just asking me a few days ago, he's a little more liberal, but he's open-minded and you know, he's kind of in the middle. He said, why do you think nationalism and white nationalism and all this, like, why do you think that's on the rise? Because it is on the rise. And I'm like, well, first of all, a nationalist can be of any color. There's Mexican nationalists, there's white nationalists, there's black nationalists, Asian nationalists. Throwing the white on it just makes it seem spooky, but it's, there's nationalism all over the world. And of course, yeah, it is rising in the United States. And I told him this literally like a couple days ago before Hillary admitted the truth. I said, it's because they don't have a handle on their immigration. They want to just like, bring anyone here, they say, no, if you talk about it, you're bad. Like even if violent crime goes up, acid attacks, female genital mutilation, all this stuff, and you're like, hey, like, can we look at it? And they say, oh, you wanna like have a conversation about it? You're racist, sexist, and xenophobic. You're a terrible person. You're a white supremacist, you're a Nazi. And you're like, what? Like this all escalated so quickly. I just wanted to open a conversation about like 
the fact that Europe is literally becoming destabilized and worse because they let in too many people. It's like basic math and science, but forever. If you even mentioned it to a liberal or a progressive, they called you racist. So Hillary Clinton, and the funny part about this is, funny part about this is Hillary Clinton has kind of sold sold out to identity politics, where if you go to Hillary Clinton 10 years ago, she was anti, or maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, she was anti-gay marriage. She was pro-illegal immigration. So like the Hillary Clinton who she pretended to be in uh, 2016 to try to win the election, which she lost and spent two times as much money as Trump, a record like $2.2 billion or something, uh, she sold out to a false ideology that she's trapped in. Because now that she tells the truth, you're gonna have like far left progressives like Alexandria Ocasio, Jimmy Dore, Kyle Kalinske, Cortez, people who all say this. They're gonna say, oh my God, how dare she lie? Because they've, they've sold the lie to like millions of people, to feminists, to all these people who bought into the lie. So now if you tell the truth, they're not gonna be able to process it because now she's literally saying what Donald Trump said. So you're gonna have, it's like a funny conundrum they've caught themselves in and I have to laugh at it. You're gonna have the far left start attacking them and saying, oh look, see, they're conservative, they're right wing. Oh my God, they're doing what Donald Trump did. But the truth is that Donald Trump has been telling the truth for two, three years and Hillary Clinton finally realized that and she realizes that she's gonna lose everything that she worked so hard for in Europe and the United States. So she has to say something to her friends like, yo, we're losing everywhere. We lost Canada, we lost Brazil, we lost the United States, we're losing Europe. And it's ridiculously unpopular. All of my Uber and Lyft drivers, a majority of them are immigrants. I had a great conversation last night with someone from Brazil. I, I asked him about Bolsonaro. I was like, what do you think about Bolsonaro? And he was like afraid to say, he's like, oh, I think it might be okay. And I, I was like, yeah, you, you probably like him, right? He's gonna do a good job. Anyway, I opened the kid up. He loves Trump, he loves America. He's like, this is the greatest economy in the world. I'm so happy to be here. I love immigrants because most immigrants don't sound like privileged, spoiled, completely delusional, brainwashed, like people from America who have no perception of reality and how the world works. So I love immigrants, keep bringing them over. Legally, they're great, uh, but of course, you're allowed to like be like, hey, if France and Germany, this is what happened in Europe, Hillary Clinton knows this now. Donald Trump's been saying it for two years. I've been saying it for two years. Uh, when you Maybe a year and a half, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little late to the party. But uh, <laughs> I'm a lot late to the party. It's probably been happening for decades in some cases. But the refugee crisis, they started... Hillary as Secretary of State, Barack Obama as President, they started a war in Libya and Syria and they kind of ruined the country for the people there. So they created a refugee crisis and Hillary is largely responsible, you know, for Syria and Libya. She's, you know, has her hands in it. So when you ruin countries like that, you create a crisis where people need to then go to other countries. And to be honest, it's not all Hillary Clinton and Obama's faults. Some countries just don't have their stuff together and maybe they never will. And that's not necessarily the problems of the entire world. You don't, you're not supposed to inherit the crime and poverty and problems of other places. You do wanna help people, of course, but you have to help. It's like letting people live in your house. If you let the right people live in your house, it's great. If you let 20 people you know, room with you and they ruin your house, now you don't have a house to live in. You're not actually helping anybody. You just ruined your own life and anyone else that you could have helped. So um, when they created the crisis in Syria and, and Libya, nobody talks about this honestly. There were people who needed help, but there were also a large majority of people who were not great people who just wanted to take advantage of the power vacuum and the chaos. So like my friend from Syria says that up to 25% of the people who went to Germany and Sweden and England and France were actually ISIS members. So they're taking on all these people because they don't want to be racist. You know, it's like, if you try to judge people by content of character, liberals don't like it anymore. So they said, we're gonna take in everybody. People didn't have passports. They're not really from Syria. And they're like, I'm from Syria. And Germany was like, yeah, for sure, we'll take you in. They took in too many people. When you go to places like France and Sweden, they're not very big countries. It's not like the United States or Canada where you won't really feel it that much. Although I, I would still argue that it's not smart to do just because it affects 1% of your population as opposed to like 30%. It doesn't make it any smarter, so I, I like where Trump's head's at. But anyway, in Sweden and France and Germany, they couldn't hide it like they do in the U.S. Uh, it's all in the streets. You know, you go to the Eiffel Tower now, they built a terrorist fence around it. You know, the, the crime is up and people, the locals say, don't go there. No, I went there five years ago. No, it's not the same. 
Why is it not the same? Nobody wants to say it. You can't say it in UK and France. They might arrest you for hate speech laws or whatever weirdo laws they have over there. But it's gotten worse. Violent crime has gone up. Uh, rape has gone up in a lot of things. And in London and England, you have knife crime is up. Gun crime is up. Overall, violent crime is up. You have celebrities admitting that they're leaving to come to Los Angeles from the UK because it's not safe anymore. It's because they took in too many refugees and illegal immigrants and they didn't properly assess who these people were. There's nothing wrong with immigration. I come from a family of immigrants. We all do, just like they pander on the TV. Immigrants are great. I don't think anyone would deny that. Um, but how you take in, who you take in, where you take in from, we used to understand that. People have to pass certain things. They have to go through a certain process and come here legally. But over the last six years, uh, you know, because Europe and, and United States and people like Hillary Clinton and Obama started this huge problem, they were like, oh, okay, we got to fix this. So let's send, it's like they're ruining everything. Let's ruin your country. Let's you ruin your country. And then we're going to ruin Europe. And then we're going to act like we're better than you. It was a really bad strategy. Uh, and they did that. And now they realize because it's, you can't fight reality forever. If it's the truth, you keep lying, people are not really uh, buying it anymore, especially in Europe. Germany's upset, France is upset. Macron's approval rating is like 19 to 20%. It's pathetic. Think about how much good press Macron gets. Macron is in the media as a centrist. He's a great guy. He's the center. He's not too far left. He's not too far right. They act like he's Gandhi reincarnated in the New York Times and Washington Post and CNN and all the mainstream media. And his approval rating still 19 to 26%. They're painting Donald Trump as literally Hitler, and he's got a higher approval rating than Obama did at certain times in Obama's career. I mean, does this not wake you up to people in America are profoundly being lied to? And people can get away with it here because if you're not from Brazil, or you're not from Europe, or you don't have to live in these countries like Libya or Syria or go to Africa or go to South America, you're so spoiled and you're, you're so privileged, which is okay. It's, it's great to have American privileges that you don't even know that you're delusional. Like liberals are like, no, 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 Trump's a really bad person. No, for sure. Like, I don't even want to consider it. And you're like, okay, but like, it's not going to work out for you because it's not the truth. And I have to praise Hillary Clinton. It's, it's really great. I don't care if they're two, three years late. I mean, I still think they should assess everything she's done in her lifetime and, and you know, maybe hold her accountable for what she's done. I'm not saying let her off the hook completely. That's for you know, the Trump administration and the CIA and the FBI and the law enforcement to decide. That's not my job. But I do have to praise people like Bill Mayer, Trevor Noah, Hillary Clinton when like 5% of the time they tell the truth because it is true. This is the exact reason that far-right populism is rising, the exact reason that Trump is successful, the exact reason Bolsonaro won, the exact reason Doug Ford won and beat liberals so bad worse than they ever have in their 151-year history. It's the reason that liberals are failing and losing worldwide is because they don't have a grip on immigration, illegal immigration, or the refugee crisis. They lie about it. They hate on anybody who wants to talk about it. Meanwhile, their citizens have to suffer. Immigration's great, but what Europe did with the refugee crisis is they messed up Libya and Syria, then they messed up their own countries. What America is doing now is they're trying to mess up everything. It's like, oh, well, white people in America are bad. Like, yeah, for sure there's bad white people. Like, let's focus on that. Let's focus on the homelessness problem. Let's focus on the fact that there's heroin addicts in the street and, you know, the streets are trash. Like, let's clean that up before we inherit the problems of Honduras, Guatemala, uh, El Salvador, and Mexico. Mexico doesn't even want the caravan there. They're all complaining because these people are just sitting in a park like ruining their, their city. Like nobody wants, what, it doesn't make sense. And they haven't made sense and they've lied and they've bought into this lie. It'll be interesting to see before I move on, be interesting to see what the news does with this because Hillary Clinton, CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, Vox, Vice, Huffington Post, name it, N NPR and others have sold this blatant lie that there was nothing wrong with their immigration policies in America and, and in Europe. They've sold this lie for two or three years. And now Hillary Clinton is trying to backpedal on that lie, something that Donald Trump and, and conservatives and others have told the truth about for decades, uh, or for at least for years. So it's gonna be interesting to see how people handle it. Do they throw her under the bus and call her right wing? Do they start to admit it and pretend like they felt that way the entire time? I don't know how they're gonna do it because they've sold, they've they've literally sold their soul to the lie. Like I can't even read Vice or Huffington Post more. It's a far left extremist like propaganda rag that literally can't assess anything properly. Like these people are so far brainwashed. I'm an environmentalist. I'm pro environment. I'm pro 
you know, uh, cleaning up the oceans. Like I'm, I'm pretty, pretty hippie when it comes to like liberal ideology, but there's nothing in liberal newspapers that makes sense. They're like, oh, the far forests are on fire. Yeah, like did, did PG and E like light them? Who started them? They're like, oh, we don't know climate change and it's gonna get worse because it's like, dude, you guys are psychopaths. Like you can't even figure out who started the fire and you're already just telling people it's gonna get worse. Like you say you're environmentalist, but you have the worst air quality in the United States and I have to breathe it. I can't stand it, so I'm probably gonna leave soon. To start a small business here, it costs $850 every year you get taxed unnecessarily. That's why they're losing more businesses to China than any state in the, in the United States. They have the highest poverty, they have the highest homelessness. You're losing in every category of compassion, yet you act like you're the most compassionate people. It's because liberal politicians and liberal media and progressive far left media has sold a lie for five years and it's beautiful to see them backpedal on that lie because it is a lie. And most of what they say now is a lie because they can't process what's actually going on from an actual standpoint of math and science and reality of all these things they claim to be so great about because they have sold their soul to identity politics, which is not being able to assess situations by content of character, what's going on, how we handle it, whether it be popular or not popular. They say race, religion, gender, white people bad, America bad, Western world bad, Europe bad, France white people bad, Africa good, Somalia good, Syria, Libya, all these things so good. Even though we were the ones who caused the problems there and now we're gonna bring those problems into Europe. Uh, they're, I don't know, like we'll just, and then don't say anything about it or you're racist, sexist, and xenophobic where it's like, it's not true. It's not true for people in America or Europe. It's nobody's all good, nobody's all bad. There's certain societies that are clearly way better as far as like the quality of life. Uh, Europe and United States being one of them in certain areas. In certain areas, we suck. You know, food quality is awful. I mean, we're doing a lot of terrible things for the best nation in the world. We have a lot of work to do. Education is not great here. So overall, you know, it's not just black and white and race and religion, but they've sold their soul to that. So for the last four years, they've said, if you talk about immigration, if you talk about illegal immigration or the refugee crisis, you're a horrible person. And now they're finally realizing they're losing the core of the world and they're gonna lose elections. So like she's done 10,000 times in her career, she'll go back to the truth or the, like whatever's popular, but it's nice to see. Just to wrap it up again, uh, it, it means that she realizes, even though she's spending billions of dollars, she has Twitter lying with her, she has Facebook lying for her, she has Google lying for her, she has like people banning conservatives for telling the truth, she's realizing, this shows that she realizes that despite all the power and money she has coming in and all these organizations, they're losing. They know that they're losing. They know that it's not working and they know that they've lost the people. And that's a beautiful thing, to see the truth finally winning. Because I have love for every country, creed, ethnicity, everything that they would pander for, but it doesn't mean that I want to tank Europe and turn France into, you know, like uh, trying to pick a Iran or Saudi Arabia. Like clearly, like women in Europe, it's, I don't think it's really crazy to say, Women in Europe can dress how they want. They're free to do some stuff. I guess you don't really have free speech in Europe, but they don't have to cover up and do all these things that you do have to do in, in Saudi Arabia. You do have to do in Iran. Like that's their culture. You know, that's the culture in, in certain parts of the world. And you know, you go to Somalia, people are not living like women in France, no matter what your race is. So if you intake 400,000 people who are mostly young men, it wasn't women and children like they said, you're going to inherit their culture whether you want it or not. You're going to have that effect. You know, if you have a room of 100 people and you bring in 25 people that are a lot crazier and don't want to follow the rules, it's going to affect the whole room. It's just basic math on a, on a big scale. And, you know, Europe sold out. They made massive mistakes, not only in their wars, but in how they deal with it. They ruined, you know, a lot of their, their, their uh, countries. And I'm not saying it's done forever, but... They got a lot of work to do. It's nice to see Hillary Clinton tell the truth. Maybe now liberal news will stop lying, have an awakening. Maybe not, maybe maybe they'll throw her under the bus. We'll see, very interesting stuff, but I am excited to see her actually tell the truth. It's pretty fun. Uh, next story.